it was a, a line that was ahead of its time. You know, you go back and even you watch the animated series, it was ahead of its time as far as like subject matter and things like that. And the toys were fantastic. And it's unfortunate that it didn't last longer. Hello there, Valiverse fans. Welcome to another edition of Valiverse Declassified, where we are answering all the questions from you, the fans. And it seems there's a lot you want to know. So let's hear what you have to say and see if I can give you an answer to those burning questions. Ooh, that's a, that's a tough one. If you asked me if I wanted to do Batman figures or Lord of the Rings figures, that would be like asking me who my favorite child is. I would love to do Batman figures. I don't see that happening anytime in the near future. McFarlane has got the DC license pretty well locked up as far as collector figures go. Uh, I think that if there was ever an opportunity to do Batman in maybe a different version or what have you, I would love to jump at the opportunity. So We'll see. As Valiverse continues to grow, maybe it's something we look into because it would absolutely be a dream come true to do Batman figures. I as well. And I had looked into it because, you know, Exo Squad was one of my favorites, uh, you know, growing up. And it was it was a, a line that was ahead of its time. You know, you go back and even you watch the animated series, it was ahead of its time as far as like subject matter and things like that. And the toys were fantastic. And it's unfortunate that it didn't last longer, but it's so iconic. And I had some ideas in mind of how to one, revamp Exo Squad, and two, how to bring it into a more modern time. And I had looked into it and it it, it didn't pan out. Uh, I, I think they're supposedly still working on some sort of reboot in a way. Uh, the original creators working on something. Uh, I know there's, I think I believe Nacelle said they're doing something with Exo Squad, but um, I'm not sure exactly what that is. Um, you know, I think they're probably going to lean into the the more vintage uh, nostalgia end of it, which is what they tend to do with their stuff. Um, I I would like to take a different approach, and you know that's why. While there's not many of them left because they keep getting swallowed up, uh, I'm not the biggest fan of, of rehashing retro stuff. And if you do, I'd like to see a continuation of what came before, not just a rehash of it, which is why I was a little disappointed in the Indiana Jones retro line because they just rehashed figures that, that were already out. Yes, they're hard to get, but they just rehashed old stuff. And yeah, they brought, eventually brought in some you know, figures that weren't done before. Same thing with the, you know, the Star Wars retro line. They're just starting to sprinkle in characters that were never done before, like Mon Mothma. But overall, they've done the majority of characters of figures that, you know, are already in people's collections. And I just think if you're going to go down that road, you should do something new and do characters that haven't been done before. So going back to Exo Squad, I would have done a, a totally new take on it and modernized uh, Exo Squad in a way rather than just revisiting the old stuff. But who knows? Maybe one day we'll get that opportunity. Um, we'll see. But uh, it's definitely a, a great brand with some potential. Oh, you are tugging at my heartstrings. I'm a huge Michael Turner fan. So, you know, doing Aspen stuff uh, would be great. Uh, I think there there is potential to possibly do Fathom figures. I think those would would be great. I think my question is more of a relevance question. While Aspen is still around and still producing comics, after Michael Turner died, I'm not sure how much of the fan base is still there because he's not doing any any new work creating new characters, it's different artists and different writers now running Aspen. So I think maybe the essence of Michael Turner is still there, but it's still not Michael Turner. So my question would be, how relevant are the Fathom and Soulfire characters um, currently? If you were to do a figure line, would there be enough fans 
to actually get on and, and support that line. Now, the one thing I would absolutely love to do is Ecos. Ecos was uh, a, you know, a, a story that Michael Turner had created about this, this alien world. And when he first formed Aspen Comics, he had pitched the idea of either Soulfire or Ecos. Which book would the fans want to see him do first? And Soulfire was very fantasy based, but it was also very, you know, female, you know, skin heavy, which there was nothing wrong with, with that. It's just at that time in the early 2000s in comics, that was something that was, you know, in the forefront, you know, very beautiful, scantily clad women in comics. So the fans got used to seeing Michael Turner draw beautiful women. And I think they just wanted to see him continue drawing beautiful women. Whereas I looked at Ecos as something totally removed from what he's done. And I wanted to see that side. I wanted to see him handle a more alien tech, you know, fantasy realm in that sense. And I voted for Ecos, but Ecos did not win out. Soulfire won out and he ended up doing Soulfire. And then he went, uh, he, and he did some DC stuff. He did Superman, Batman for a while. And was doing a bunch of co covers for Marvel and DC. And, you know, with him being sick, coming back and forth, he never ended up getting to Ecos. And I would have loved to have seen what he could have done with Ecos. But the little we got, the preview book we got, I think there was enough there to, for me to want to do figures based on that. So if that's something that they want to lean more into and continue doing more eco stuff, I would love to talk with them about possibly doing Ecos figures. Ooh, well, that's, that's an interesting request. I do love the Masters of the Universe uh, Origins line. I do have all of them here in the office. I think it's great at what what Mattel did. I did say that I don't like rehashing a vintage stuff, but this is an exception because of what they put in place. They took the vintage stuff and they like they updated it. They just added a few bits of articulation, some custom custom ability to it, and. You know, the, the original Master of the Universe figures, they have that rubber band inside. They do get sticky with the plasticizer, as I mentioned. So this is a nice way of updating your vintage collection with something that's, you know, a little less pricey, a little more modern. Uh, so I love what they did. And they, they kept very tight to, you know, the, the, the original model, just just updated it just enough. So this is the one exception where I, I'm okay with it. So I don't know how an action force line would do in that style and scale. Uh, that That's interesting. It might be something worth exploring. Um, I do have a fondness for that Masters of the Universe Remco type squat body style. So it might be interesting. Um, you know what? I think you just got the wheels turning. Maybe I'll look into that. At this time, we do not need any concept artists. I handle 98% of the character creation concepting. I do have an individual that helps me with some future vehicle ideas because I'm admittedly not a good vehicle designer. Uh, so my forte is more in the, the character and figure development. So I, I use him. He's been doing some great uh, future vehicle concepts for me. But at this time, uh, we do not have a need for any additional concept artists. But thank you for asking. At this point, we are not hiring. We just filled all of our open positions. We just hired our operations manager, Mark Weber, who Mark and I used to work together back in Hasbro days. And he's doing a great job uh, fulfilling the needs we have. So at this time, we do not have any open roles because we've had all our open roles filled by our current employees. But uh, keep an eye. We tend to post on our LinkedIn, which is our, our business page, where we may have any sort of job opening. So just uh, give us a follow on LinkedIn and you'll be able to see any posts we put about any future roles.
Why, of course the Vanguard has a trailer hitch. How could we create a vehicle as great as the Vanguard and miss something like putting in a trailer hitch? I mean, the Vanguard has cup holders. So if we have cup holders, we're definitely going to have a trailer hitch. And that trailer hitch just may come in handy for future vehicles down the road. The Vanguard wheels are 100% rubber. We wanted to make sure that the Vanguard felt as realistic as possible in your Action Force world. So there was only one option to make the vehicles and vehicles wheels in rubber. I think if we were to have made the vehicles wheels in plastic, that would be a big disservice to the Vanguard item. We did include the military green version in our fan voting for the Vanguard. And that version did come in third place. I do believe it went gray, black, green, and tan. However, all of the votes were pretty well close to each other, just separated by a small margin. And I think having the military green version is something we should definitely include in the line. So I think once we get through the first offerings for the Vanguard, I think we'll start to explore maybe other additions. How can we spice up the next version of the Vanguard? What added pieces can we put on? Is it, you know, a partner exclusive or something like that? And don't worry, when we see partner exclusive, we will make sure that any sort of partner exclusive is readily available. But it is definitely an option we will be exploring. Um, we just want to get through our initial uh, run of the Vanguards first before we start including new additions, but it is something we are planning. At this time, only the missile launcher add-on will be a separately purchased item. That's not saying down the road we might do something different. So as of right now, we offer the gray and the tan, and they have corresponding colored turrets for them. So there may not be a need to, you know, unless you would want an extra one for some reason. But we are looking at expansion packs, sort of gear packs for the Vanguard. And, you know, expanding on what we're doing with the missile launcher. So more will be coming. We've already started planning what the next, you know, add-on option will be for the Vanguards. But it's yet to be said if the turrets and the control arm will be offered separately in the future. No assembly is required on the Vanguard. It is set up right out of the box. So you do not have to put the wheels on, you do not have to put the doors on. The only thing you will have to add on to it is the, the turret. And if you want to switch out the turret for the missile launcher, and then putting the gas cans in the back of the trunk, like the small accessories. But as far as the construction of the vehicle itself, no, there's no assembly required. Uh, the labels are customer applied, so you can you know use all the labels that we provide with the Vanguard. Uh, to make yours uh, your custom version of your Vanguard. But no, 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 nothing like wheels or steering columns or anything like that is is required, uh, you know, getting the, the, the Vanguard out of the box. It's all ready to go, ready to roll as soon as you open that box. Absolutely. Uh, we love working with Resvani and the Hercules is a massive, massive vehicle. So... That will be much bigger than Vanguard, but it's such a cool design. And I think seeing the Hercules, also the Vengeance, the Resvani Vengeance, I personally love. So there's definitely options to do those in the future, um, you know, with our, our partnership with Resvani. So we'll see after we, we get the Vanguard out and uh, we'll see what we will be introducing as we get further down the road. Yes, the drivers do correspond with their vehicle. Now, it's not a tan driver for the tan vehicle. As you you know, you can go on Valiverse.com and you can go to the listing for the tan version and see the color of the trooper. He's more of like a black and OD green. And then the driver for the tan version is black and tan. So go to Valiverse.com. Go check out the listings for the Vanguard to see all the details of the figure and what comes in it. So you know exactly how that figure will look for that corresponding vehicle. Possibly. Not saying yes, I'm not saying no. 
It's just something that the Reapers are offered right now with the Vanguard, but we are free to offer those Reapers in any form should we want down the, down the line. So this is kind of an offshoot of the question about the OD Green version. Its answer is very similar where, yes, we could definitely plan a black version. I think, you know, a matted out black version, maybe some tinted black windows, some added armor pieces, I think could be a nice, uh, you know, additional offering, whether it be through Valiverse or, or another retail partner. So we are looking at options to possibly offer the green and the black one in the future. Any current six inch scale figure will fit in the Vanguard. Now, something like a McFarland figure is more in the seven, seven and a half inch range. Uh, I have not tested with McFarland figures. However, the Vanguard does include an adjustable seat, front seats, we'll move back and, and, and forward to accommodate for the female figures or a larger figure like Series 5 Atlas. So larger figures definitely can fit in the Vanguard. So anything from Classified to Marvel Legends, Star Wars Black Series will all fit in the Vanguard. Just not sure about a larger scale figure. I believe it's more of a, um, a one-tenth scale figure McFarlane figures are. Um, but maybe we'll maybe we'll test and see, you know, and, and and do a you know a post on our social media about how the Vanguard fits uh, different different characters. But the Vanguard will fit a figure with full tactical gear, helmets, rifles, everything in there. We've shown some pictures uh, on our social media and in you know on our YouTube channel showing how all the figures geared up can fit very easily into the Vanguard. We are working on getting the White Dragon item into Walmart, either through physical locations or through walmart.com. So we are currently working with our representatives from Walmart to see what options we can do for the White Dragon item and you know our future Action Force items. So uh, hopefully that all happens and we can get those out there, but we will definitely let you know as soon as we have news on both those fronts.